Hello everyone, Matt from Model Minutes here and welcome back to the workbench for another unboxing. This week we're taking a look at another vintage kit. This time it's the Smurf Supermarine Spitfire Mark 5B in 170 second scale. So join me as I take a look inside the box and see what this kit was like. So starting off on the front, we've got this quintessential 90s looking artwork style with the gradient between the pink and white. The image here of the Spitfire in combat with an FW190 does make it quite exciting and encourage you to buy the kit. Over on the right hand side here, you can see I've got a price tag of £3, which is what I paid for it at a model show. And then down here, it says we've got super decals. So I'm not entirely sure what a super decal was, but we'll have a look, I'm sure. On the thin edge, you can see we've got different languages about the kit. It says it's not suitable for those under 36 months. There's small parts. There's no glue and paints included. Naturally, this is not a starter set, so I'd be surprised if there were. Over here, it tells us it's made in the Czech Republic, and we've got some safety marks as well. The other short edge has some information about the actual kit. So it says there's one version included. These are our dimensions here. Get a bit closer so you can see them. And there are 43 parts included. So that's pretty good. The short edges then. I have a price label on here. Not entirely sure what currency that was, but it's 150 something. And uh, this has the same artwork as on the front as well as a barcode. And then this has the same artwork on the front. On the back then, we've got our painting instructions and decal placement. So it tells us that this is a Spitfire Mark V as used by 313 Squadron RAF in 1942. And I believe that these are all humbral colours being called out here. Pretty standard mid-war RAF Spitfire colours. We've got a duck egg blue, which is a sort of a sky type S or, you know, a bit controversial. We've got light grey underside, sea grey upside and dark green on our camouflage. We have also got a bit of yellow here on the wing leading edges, which I seriously doubt is a decal, but we'll have a look as we go through. And we've got our uh, gun ports in red. So yeah, let's have a look inside the box. The box is falling apart ever so slightly and everything is loose. Nothing is contained in a bag. So if there was a bag once upon a time, it's, it's gone now. Apart from the transfers and the clear parts, which are in a bag. So possibly that's how it originally came in the box. Not my favorite way of doing things um, because you can see that they don't fit and there is space for them to roll around and fall apart but it is what it is. So let's look at the instructions. So all in black and white. This is about the history at the top and then some technical stuff here. And then we have some assembly tips about how to detach our parts, how to use our cement using pegs, how to apply the transfers, and then a key to the different symbols down the bottom that we're going to encounter, which is either glue or don't glue. And flipping over them, we've got our assembly stages, and there are 10 in total, it would appear. So we assemble our propeller, our cockpit control panel parts, and then our chair and bulkhead, and potentially like that's a radio part or something behind the chair. Then we install those in the fuselage, add our engine exhausts, then we add our prop, and interestingly, you have to do it at this stage, so you can put the uh, retaining pin behind um, if you want it to rotate freely, I'm guessing. Although, actually, that's an interesting assembly method. No, this looks like that gets glued in there, and then that goes through there, and then that 17 holds it in place. So, um, yeah, I'll, I'll, when I come to do the build, I'll investigate that. That looks pretty interesting. The canopy comes in, looks like four parts. You've got one for the front, one clear part for the uh, rear view mirror. Then you've got the main canopy part. Then you've got the rear part. So I would have anticipated that would be one part. Um, not sure that will give you the option to have the canopy in an open position, but interesting nonetheless. I imagine with a bit of fettling, you could potentially get that to look like it was open. Tailplane is added. 
landing gear doors and wheels are joined we have a molded part for an air intake which goes in there our wing halves are joined together and then we add our wing tips so I'm, I'm guessing that by adding our wing tips it means that you could do different variants with this kit cannons are added and then the small details such as this air intake and the pitot tube and the landing gear are added and then we need to refer to our uh, color painting instructions on the back of the box yeah not bad fairly easy to follow so let's have a look at the transfers let's get them out of their bag this may well be the the original bag and the first time they've ever been out so let's have a look there we go so let's get them out and the clear parts come out as well so here are our transfers and it says they were printed by propag team so i don't know what company that is sadly because they were in with the clear parts the clear parts have damaged the transfers you can see here the center roundels uh, the red dots they have been damaged they've got a bit of a tear in it and so to have the flashes the identification flashes on the tail not great um possibly salvageable maybe could cover it up with some uh, chipping perhaps um but yeah a little bit disappointing that they're not perfect the printing though is pretty good we can see that there's no yellowing which is nice they do seem to be very thin um, I worry that they might disintegrate when you come to apply them. You can see here the red on there. It's not the neatest of printing. It's like a little blob in the middle. It is a bit off-center. Registry is a little bit questionable there. Um, may need to get aftermarket transfers. They may be perfectly fine um, to use. So we'll have to see what happens when we come to do this one. But yeah, so those are the transfers. Let's have a look at the clear parts so like i said we've got three parts to our cockpit canopy and they look all right they look pretty good for the most part they're crystal clear flash is minimal uh, panel lines are raised quite chunky the canopy here um, it seems a little bit misshapen um, I don't remember the Spitfire looking so it's sort of flat on the edge there um, which gives it a strange shape to it um, it should be a little bit more balloony I think but you know that could just be me not knowing enough about the Spitfire but yeah clear parts look on the whole to be alright the mirror I guess isn't a clear part then because it's not on the sprue or it's missing speaking of Let's see if we can find it on our main sprues, just for sanity's sake. And it may be that one there. What was the number? Number 15 is this one here. This tiny little part here is our mirror. So yeah, it's a, it's a normal part. And speaking of our plastic parts, they're molded in a light gray plastic. It's almost white, but it's um, just a very light gray and the flash is fairly minimal it's not too bad the parts the plastic feels quite solid it's not very brittle and it doesn't feel particularly greasy which is nice the details are mostly of the raised variety there's quite a lot of raised panel lines there is a little bit of recessed around the operating surfaces of the wings there they are quite nicely molded though a little bit of uh, rivet detail in a few places the smaller parts, the wheels are a little bit generic looking. They're okay. Landing gear legs, not particularly fine, but you know, they're all right. They're okay to use. This is the control column here, I think. Let's have a look at the instructions. Yeah, number 11 is the control column. So that's um, more of a representation of a control column because it's not got the finesse and that an actual control column has you know it's more rounded than a, a square blob at the top but that is what it is we've got a chair as well so cockpit detail on this is moderate let's see if there's anything on the inside of the fuselage oh and surprisingly there actually is there are a few little bits of detail on the inside of the fuselage we've got some little controls molded in there which is quite nice the tail wheel is molded on as one part and then flipping over, we can see that we've got reasonable detail on the outside, 
plastic is a little bit thin in places but again it's all of the raised variety but generally looks okay it's not a bad looking model on the whole coming on down we've got our interesting extras so propeller wheel parts speaking of the wheel parts it doesn't make mention that you can glue them in a raised position which is interesting um, I imagine it wouldn't be too hard to put them in a raised position maybe with a little bit of modification you could get there but um, yeah it doesn't make mention of that but yeah interestingly here we have our normal wingtips which are the ones we need to use for this particular variant but we also have clipped wingtips and it looks like we've got a tropical air intake with filter um, so you can build different versions of this kit if you wanted to so I know my transfers aren't the best but if I find something else online and it's maybe a tropical version or it has clipped wings then I can replicate that in this kit we've also got two different spinners as well depending on the variant um, cannons reflector gun sight yeah they, they, tr they tried a little bit with this kit didn't they that's interesting and then on to the final sprue we've got our control panel with moderate detail on it the feet uh, rudder pedals are just molded on um you know in real life they were further back than that but they've tried a little bit a radiator that goes in there we have our engine exhausts they no, don't i don't think they look particularly good again they're more of a representation and is that the right number was it just three it probably was just three. Let me know down in the comments. Um, tail surfaces, same sort of deal. Details are relatively good. And the lower surfaces. So we've got our holes here for the ejector, uh, for the casings, our air intakes. Molding is a little bit soft around the wheel well. It's not great. And then our gun ports here. Yeah, so speaking of the gun ports, that yellow bit there, uh, that wasn't um, a transfer was it we didn't see a transfer for that so you'd have to paint that yourself but yeah not a bad looking kit for its age the inside of the wings did they have any uh, gear bay representation no they didn't nothing there so you're just going to have just nothing on the inside there it's just going to have to be painted an appropriate color unless you wanted to do extra details yeah not bad no pilot i notice so if you wanted to have this flying um a little bit difficult especially given the fact that we don't have a display stand and um no way to mount one unless we do our own holes and also the fact that it doesn't tell us that we can put our wheels in a raised position but yeah not a bad looking kit so let's wrap this up we had one two you know, i was a little stuck three four Grey plastic sprues of a moderate quality with some interesting detail and options for displaying the aircraft in different configurations if uh, that's what you wanted to do. We have three clear parts for the canopy all um, on the sprue here. Again, not sure if I can display that in the open position, but um, we'll have a look at when I come to build it. Transfers are generally okay. However, they have suffered some damage. Would be tempted to get some replacements from an aftermarket uh, company. And then we have our instructions, which are perfectly acceptable, especially given the age of the model. But a nice addition is the fact that the painting and decal placement instructions are printed in full colour, which is absolutely wonderful to see. So let's talk a little bit about the history of the kit then. The kit I've got here in front of me was a 1996 release from Smur, but it is a Reebok. It's not a Smur tooling. It is in fact a Heller tooling from 1975. So despite the fact it's quite an old tooling, 1975, it doesn't look that bad. And I think it's evident in the fact that Mr. Craft have still got this in production or they did have it in production in 2014, but I've looked online and you can buy the Mr. Craft version from 2014 in um, various shops and it's about 10 and 11 pounds in price which does seem a little bit expensive but i don't know precisely what's inside the mr craft kit there may be more decal options since 1975 though this kit has found its way into a variety of different ranges 
Well, I would hazard a guess that perhaps Smur bought it from Heller because they had it in their range from 1996 right up to 2012. So perhaps Heller had a new version uh, in the 90s and they just wanted to sell off their tooling. So yeah, for £3, vintage 1990s kit, this is definitely worth the money. What did you think of my unboxing though? Did you think my assessment of this kit was fair? Let me know down in the comments. As always, a quick shout out to my patrons and channel members for the extra support they give the channel. A massive thanks to these guys on screen. If you'd like to join them, take a look at the links in the description. In the description as well, there are additional ways to support the channel if you'd like to. However, one great way to support the channel for free is by subscribing and turning those notifications on so you never miss a modeling video. Finally, the last thing to say to you is a massive thank you to you for watching, and I'll see you on the workbench again next time. Thank you.